Hi, my name is Roger. How are you doing? It's winter in Sweden. It's winter in Östersund. It's the day after Christmas. We have gotten a lot of snow. And it's pretty cold. Not freezingly cold, but... Yeah, well... It's, it's cold. It's cold. I've been a little bit busy by being in quarantine because I wanted to meet my parents for Christmas and uh, so I isolated myself for a week so I could meet them. And my mother, as usual, she cooked for a small army. Uh, but it was pleasant. It's the day after Christmas today and I want to show you my new studio desk. And it's pretty awesome. So let's go in and check it out because I'm cold. I'm not sure that anything beats a good cup of coffee when you come in from the cold. I built a new studio desk. The first thing I had to do, of course, was to remove my old studio desk and all the gear in my studio. So here's the past Roger removing things from the studio. Hey! What? Yeah, I'm listening to an audiobook. Oh. Okay, so that's why you didn't hear me. There was a lot of things to remove. Guitars, keyboards. Fortunately, I have cases for most of my stuff. But it, all my studio was a mess because uh, there were things all over on top of each other in my other rooms. Removing rack gears. And my computer, the famous trash can. Finally, after a few days, I ended up with a mess of cables. All those cables were attached inside my studio desk before. Yeah, I gave up and did it another day. My former studio desk, before I slaughter it, because I had to slaughter it, to get rid of it, to throw it away. So here's my new studio desk. Pretty cool, huh? It looks the same. Yeah, nearly, nearly. But the functionality is much better. I will show you. First, some coffee. Let's go through it and see what I've done. It took a while to build it. It took longer than I thought. I thought that I would be able to build it in like two weeks. It took more like four. Also depending on that I had to do other work at the same time. But finally, it's finished. So let's go through it and see what I've done. Let's start at the top. You see, I have three screens, two computer screens and one TV. The computer screens are pretty obvious. But the TV... I use the TV for metering when I'm mixing, for sheet music when I'm practicing or arranging. And sometimes I just watch a movie or a game of football or something. Football. Football is the sport where you kick the ball with the foot. You don't take it with your hands and running. You kick the ball with the foot. It's not that difficult, really. Football, foot and ball. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm soldering cables, sorting sheet music or whatever, I just put on a movie so I can relax my eyes and don't get bored to death. That's why I have the TV. And the TV is connected both from my computer and from a DVD player, which I will show you later. I also have two MIDI controllers. The Studio Logic MIDI controller is very new to me. I bought it just a month ago. I haven't programmed it, I haven't learned it yet. Hopefully I can use the buttons on the controller 
for key switches, especially for my orchestral samples, where I need key switching to make all the articulations and things like that. But I haven't done that yet. And therefore, I still use my old trusty Behringer MIDI controller as well, which works. Of course, it, it works. I mainly use it when I'm automating volume and effect sense and things like that when I'm mixing. The noise from the motorized faders, though, annoys me a bit. So hopefully I can take that away in a while. I have a small USB hub on my desk for USB memory sticks. I also have my iLock and my Vienna key and things like that in that hub. And the card readers for my camera. If you go to the top left of my desk, I have my old Imagic Uniter, Uniter, Un the MIDI interface and a line mixer from Fostex where my MIDI keyboards could go through. Now there's only one because the only old keyboard I kept was this Roland MKS-20 because I haven't found anything to replace it with. <laughs> and then you see a bunch of remote controls. I just have this blank plate, uh, rack plate, which I attach Velcro to and then Velcro on the remote controls so they are in place when I don't need them. There's a remote control for my video light. There's a remote control for the receiver. The colorful remote control is for some light bulbs that can change color. And then there's the DVD player and the TV. If we go down to the bottom left of my studio desk, you see some shelves for hard drives and uh, things like that, and also USB hub. I have a bigger USB hub inside of my desk, where most of the things are connected to. I wanted a USB hub on the front so I can easily connect things on the fly. Inside of my desk is my computer. I didn't want to place the computer and my sound cards on the same side of the desk because both of them generates a lot of heat and it gets very warm. So I have my computer on the left side and my sound cards on the right side. One thing I should mention is that if you are going to build a studio desk like this, plan electricity. I did that. So I have a lot of uh, electricity connections inside and on the back side of my desk because there's a lot of things that needs electricity. On the right side of my studio desk, and we start at the bottom, there's a receiver, which is connected to a 5.1 system for movies and stuff like that, and a DVD player. Above that is a four channel DI, and then a Behringer Mic Pre. This Mic Pre is actually pretty good, at least if you consider the price. For me, it sounds rather transparent. I don't think it has the best dynamics and it has no character whatsoever. But I use it for my keyboards and uh, guitar DI and things like that. On the top right of my desk, first we have two DBX 160A compressors, which are hardwired to two of my preamps, I will show you. Then we have a Genelec speaker switcher selector. My main speakers are my focal shape twin. Those are connected directly to my sound card. The alternate output on my sound card are connected to this Genelec speaker selector. And there I can choose different speakers I want to listen to. So I can choose my Genelecs. I can choose the hi-fi speakers. I also have two Focal Alpha 8 uh, around my keyboard rig. I have a couple of small computer speakers on the shelf above my Rhodes. I have those because sometimes I want to listen to how it sounds sounding from a laptop or something to see if I can hear everything in small speakers like this. And I also have two lousy hi-fi speakers in my kitchen. 
And you will be surprised how many times I found errors in my mixes by listening to those speakers in my kitchen. Because if something is too loud, too harsh, too soft, too muddy, I will hear it directly in those speakers. I don't know why. I don't know. But I'm guessing it's because I'm in another environment. I have those speakers when I want to listen to projects I'm doing, when I'm cooking or making coffee or things like that, and maybe I'm concentrating on something else. And because of that, I hear what's wrong with my mixes or arrangement or whatever. Below my Genelec speaker selector, there's a Ferrofish ADDA converter. It converts analog to digital and, and vice versa. So I can use analog hardware analog preamps for example with my sound cards and speaking of analog preamps the next thing is a Focusrite 8 channel mic pre and then I have my two sound cards it's the Universal Audio Apollo I have one Apollo 8P with 8 mic pre's and one Apollo 8 with 4 mic pre's I also have two Universal Audio satellites which are extra processor power for the universal audio plugins on inside on the back of my studio desk if we go to the right i have a rack on top of the rack is my line 6 helix line 6 helix is my guitar amplifier which i use both live and in my studio below that there's four golden age pre 73 preamps they are supposed to be clones of the famous Neve 1073 preamps, which they're not. They don't sound the same. But I'd like them, especially for electric and acoustic guitar. They have this kind of mid-range I like from the guitars. Two of those preamps are hardwired to my DBX-160A compressors also. Then there's an old TLA audio tube four channel preamp which I don't use so much anymore I use it if I need some low end growl from a signal it could be a synth bass or a Rhodes or something then I use it so I still keep it in my rack and then there's my input patch where I connect my XLR cables so I can record the signal I have a multi cable going to my drum room to my guitar amp room, to my kitchen, and one to the back side of my studio room. The colorful TRS cables you see are a patch bay for my headphone system. So I can send it to my drum room, to my guitar room, to my kitchen, and to three places in my studio room. One solution I did was I have this Groove Tubes, the Brick Mic Pre and DI. I don't think it's such a good mic pre because it doesn't have gain enough. But it's a good DI. When I plug in a guitar into that, the, the signal goes DI'd into the computer. The signal goes to the helix. And it also goes to my pedal board and then into my amp room. I can record a DI, the helix, and a mic'd amp with two mics at the same time, if I want to. Did I tell you that my desk now is on wheels? Now it's easy to fix things on the back side. I just have to pull it out. The keyboard I'm using is a Yamaha CP4 electric piano. And I can just pull it out from the desk if I want to play on it. So that was a quick tour around my desk. Hope you liked it. So what do you think? Do you think it looks good? Do you think that this will function? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. The Swedish word of today. Because my studio desk is on wheels and because it's Christmas, in Sweden, the pronunciation of the word wheel and Christmas are the same. So in Swedish, wheel is jul. And Christmas is jul. And roger that. <laughs>